Okay, for our backstage pass members, this is a special look at the production of the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. We don't have the logo in the background. Nothing. All right. So we have the SR behind you. Okay, and it's lit up. Schoolhouse Rocked. Yeah. All right, let's get this going. Today, we have a very special treat for our Backstage Pass members. This is an exclusive look at the production of the Schoolhouse Rock podcast. Now, it's also a special podcast episode because there's two people in the seats. Normally, the second person would be on a screen behind Yvette because we're going to do this as a call-in show normally. And normally, I would not be on this show. In fact, I hope to not be on it more than once or twice again ever. (laughs) Um, Yvette He's is the behind the, the scenes guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yvette is definitely the voice of Schoolhouse Rock. She is hosting and has done a great job with interviews and has learned to be a great interviewer. I am definitely the guy behind the scenes. And so I don't love to be on camera and I don't love to be on mics, um, but I do love the work we're doing and I think it's important. So we're here today. Um, the reason we're doing this episode as episode one, even though we've already recorded five other episodes of the podcast with uh, preview uh, Israel Wayne Connie Albers Ginger Hubbard Carol Swain and Scott LaPierre all excellent episodes I've heard them all but you haven't yet Um, is because as we kick off the podcast we want people to know what to expect from the show and what's coming and why we're doing this and why we're doing the movie so we're doing this special episode It'll be episode one on the podcast feed, and it's just going to set the stage for the podcast. So you guys get to be a part of the behind the scenes. We are going to press record on our trusty Zoom H6 audio recorder. (laughs) You can find one in the show notes if you'd like one. They're fantastic. (laughs) Um, And we're going to record. You'll notice today Yvette has a new microphone which you would know if you had seen previous episodes which we would have recorded, but because this is actually the first episode, it'll look like she... Which is actually the sixth episode. It'll look like she switches mics for five episodes (laughs) and then goes back to this mic, but here we go. So I'm going to hit record, and then I'm going to turn it over to Yvette Yvette Hampton, the beautiful producer (laughs) and host of Schoolhouse Rocked, and all I will do from this point forward is answer questions. I will never ask them. <laughs> He's been instructed not to ask the questions. <laughs> I will use one or two word answers. <laughs> and I will try to answer every question with a question. <laughs> Great idea. Okay, I'm hitting record and then we Hold will on, roll. Let me take a drink. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'll do the same. <laughs> All right, we're off to the races. My mouth is so dry. Okay, here goes. I will try not to use my um, country western radio announcer voice during the show, but we'll see. It might come out. It did come out last (laughs) time. That's why we're on take four. (laughs) And we're recording. Welcome. Ah, I can't say welcome. I'm going to just start that over, but we're not going to start. Welcome to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I'm Yvette Hampton, producer and host of the upcoming documentary Schoolhouse Rocked, The Homeschool Revolution. On this podcast, we bring you the very best from today's homeschool leaders to help you start strong and finish well. This podcast is for you. If you have a guest or topic suggestion, email us at podcast at schoolhouserocked.com. We are so excited to have you here. This is the first official episode of the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast, and I have an amazing guest with me today. I can say hands down that my guest today is my absolute favorite guest that I have had on and that I will ever have on the podcast. Thank you. That's a high honor. (laughs) It is. So my guest today is Garrett Hampton, director of Schoolhouse Rocked, The Homeschool Revolution. And he also happens to be my wonderful, faithful, loving husband of 23 years and the father of my two amazing, beautiful daughters. Proudly. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you. It's exciting to be here. Yeah, I'm really excited about this podcast. We've been talking about doing this for 
over a year and kind of it's been kind of in the back of our planning process as we've been working on so many other different things. And, you know, God's just put us in a great position where over the past two years, as we've been recording for the movie and filming, we have had a chance to meet so many amazing people. And it just made sense to be able to reach out to those people again and say, hey, will you be part of the podcast? And so we're excited to do that. I mean, do you want to Tell them what the purpose of the podcast is. Well, the purpose of the podcast is very much the same as the purpose of Schoolhouse Rock, the movie, which is to encourage and equip homeschool families. We set out when we when we started production, when we started pre-production, one of the first things we did was write out our mission statement. And it's very simple. The mission of Schoolhouse Rocked is to encourage and equip homeschool families to start strong and finish well. And so everything we've done throughout that has been guided by that goal. Um, Our primary goal is to glorify God in all we do, but we want to do that by building up homeschool families. We know that it can be difficult. And we know that it can, it's super rewarding. And so we want to be a part of the process of making homeschooling great for your family. That's what we're doing with the film. That's what we're doing with the podcast. Yeah. So maybe we could give them a little bit of an idea of kind of where this podcast is going. Um, We have actually, this is podcast number one, but we have actually recorded five already. And we have several more already scheduled to record. So I'm really, really excited about who who we have. Um, We so far have recorded uh, interviews with um, Israel Wayne, Ginger Hubbard, Connie Albers, Carol Swain, and Scott LaPierre. All of them excellent. All of them excellent. I've heard them also. um, All of them excellent and all of them part of the cast. Right. And um, and then we've got Pam Barnhill coming up. We've got uh, Dr. Christopher Perrin. We have Andrew Kern. And we have several others that we're still actually just trying to work out dates with. But it's actually not going to be all the expert types, as people would know, it will also be regular just homeschool moms like me who are just in the thick of it right now, who are working through this great thing that we call homeschooling. And um, and so we have several moms who just have different stories. Maybe I know we've got one mom who's going to be on and she dealt with cancer a few years ago. And so she's got just a great testimony about her journey of dealing with cancer and homeschooling at the same time and how God brought her and her family through that. We've got um, Colleen Kessler will be on talking about kids who are twice exceptional and gifted. And we've got just a a great lineup of people who will be on the podcast and just some great moms and dads who will come on and just share their experiences and wisdom so that we can encourage and equip people to be able to homeschool. So we're very excited about that. Now, can I ask you a question about that? Sure. You say moms and dads, and already we've recorded five episodes and two of them have been homeschool dads. Mm -hmm. How does listening to homeschool dads build up, encourage, equip homeschool moms? Well, I, I actually, my hope and prayer is that with the podcast, that it won't be a podcast that just moms will listen to. I'm really hoping that with the dads who will be on, that they will be able to encourage the other dads because dads have such a very important role in homeschooling. And we actually talk a lot about that in the movie. And we'll talk about the movie in a few minutes. But in the movie, we talk a lot about the important role of dads to lead their families, to encourage and support their wives, and how they can do that. And so that, uh, if anyone ever asked me what my favorite part of the movie is, that's hands down my, my absolute favorite part, because I think many dads don't realize how, uh, just how important that is in their day-to-day family life and how much their wives need that. Mm -hmm. It's definitely been a a fun part. Um, As we've interviewed just great Christian men who are leading their families well and uh, going through this journey and being spiritual leaders, we've always taken a minute to step out of the homeschool part of the movie and just ask them what it's like to be the spiritual leader in their home. How do they do that? What does it look like? What are they trying to get um, get into their kids and get out of out from their kids? And it's always been a huge encouragement. We've had some great discussions. And I will tell you, there may be another movie in that. Um, we have not talked about this, but there's so much good stuff there. You will see it on the Backstage Pass site for sure. Um, but there may be something else in the works. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I want to back up a little bit and talk a little bit about Schoolhouse Rocked because some people listening to this podcast 
may not know that Schoolhouse Rock is actually a mo- movie. It's a full length movie that we are currently in production on. Mm-hmm. And so let's let's tell them a little bit about the movie, kind of our story, what we've done, sure. and how we've come to this place of doing this podcast. Do you want to go? <laughs> I can. <laughs> I think you're wanting me to go, right? Well, I kind of want to start from the, not the very beginning of time, but um, start In a little. In the beginning, <laughs> God created the heavens and the earth. Yes, he did. The earth was without form and void, <laughs> and the spirit of God and was then, hovering over the face of the in deep. In the year 2016. That's a big jump. That is a big jump. Okay. 2016. So we'll go back to the very inception of the movie. I was teaching film at a private school in Lancaster, California. And in that year, I got asked to help out with a student film. Um, the, the girl doing the film was a friend of a teacher that I was working with. And it was a short film on homeschooling. That really was the beginning of this project. And uh, I saw this short film that she did and thought, wow, what a great opportunity to just build up homeschooling families, to show that homeschooling is a great option for families and really to legitimize the movement. And so, um, but this film was short. It was seven minutes long, I think. And even in that seven minutes, it was really powerful. So um, I actually asked her if she wanted to do a a feature and she said, no, she was done with that project. So I said, you know, that would be an awesome movie. And we started thinking about it at that point. Um, And I think you should mention previous to that, you had worked in the Hollywood film industry for many years. Right. So that was part of your background. And then you had worked in the music industry before that. Right. My, my background is really entertainment. Um, uh, it, I've had a varied background, but the, the last 10 years I've really spent doing movies. And prior to that I had done music. Um, and so it wasn't like I was just jumping into this movie thing. Cause uh, man, it, it would be a hard thing to jump into. But I had taken a year where I was teaching film at a school, really because the movie industry had just become such a crazy mess for our family. I was it, there was a lot of travel, a lot of time away from the girls, and it it needed to slow down a little bit. So I had an awesome opportunity to teach film to junior high and high school students for a year, and it was a great time. Um, but it was also only a year, and so we knew something was coming after that year. We we knew we'd have to make a decision about where we'd be because it was going to end. Can I interject here? And and on on my end of it, um, I was the homeschool mom. (laughs) I was the homeschool mom who said I would never, ever, 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 ever homeschool my kids. Right. We said that for many years. We had been married for about 11 years before we had our first child. And so for those whole 11 years, we were adamant about it. We said we would never homeschool. And, And the reason for that was because we had so many misconceptions about homeschooling and what it was and all the negative stereotypes of, you know, what, what how we saw homeschooling as kids. Because it was very different when we were growing up in the 80s and, and 90s. It, it was different and we just didn't get it too. Right, right. It's not, it wasn't bad. We just didn't get it. That's exactly right. Right. It has changed though. It's ironic because even even though it was different, we still just didn't get it. And it it was still a great movement, but we just saw all the negative things that people from the outside see. So we really, I mean, we were, we had so many discussions about this saying how we would never homeschool our kids. And so we didn't want them to be socially awkward. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. The, the obnoxious, how will you socialize your kids argument came out of our mouths many times and uh, we're ashamed of it. Well, I wouldn't say that we're ashamed of it. I'm actually (laughs) glad that we were on that side of the fence because I think it has given us a much better understanding of people now who are on that side of the fence that they just simply don't get it, which is why we're making this movie. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, We wanted to answer so many of those questions because we had all those questions. And when when it came time to decide what we were going to do with our daughter for school, we had to work through all those issues. And it was by God's grace that he changed our hearts about homeschooling. Um, I'm sure we could get into that, but it might take the whole show. (laughs) But, um, But God changed our hearts 
But to do that, he had to break down a lot of misconceptions in our minds. And so part of the reason we're making this movie is so that we can show what homeschooling really looks like and that so many of those things aren't true and homeschooling can be really, really good for your family. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree. Okay, so so we started, or we, I guess you stopped at that you were teaching film at a private school. I was. And this was in... This was into the summer of 2016, so two years ago. Right. So two years ago, I knew that my time at the school was going to end at the end of the school year, and we didn't know quite what we were going to do. And yet we had felt God um, just prompting us to make this movie. And it was in little ways. He never spoke from heaven. We never heard the audible voice of God. I I wish we would have. Right. Maybe. It would have been helpful. (laughs) It would have been helpful. But we were also feeling that it was time to get out of California um, for many reasons. We love California. Our family is there. Our church is there. Our friends are there. Um, But we were feeling like it may be time to leave. And so the the break from the school job and and what I was doing was a good opportunity to determine if it was time to go. Um, which over the over the months as I as it led up to the end of the school year, God just made it more and more clear that it was time to leave and that it was a good idea to do this film. Um, and He would just confirm it in great ways. It's funny this weekend actually we we got to see some friends mm. and uh, it was it was great just seeing friends from California and getting that fellowship. But I was reminded of how God confirmed things for us. One day after church, we went out to um, to lunch with some friends who we loved, some friends for our homes, from our homeschool co-op, and they had another friend with them who we didn't know. And we were just at the point where we were ready to tell people we were going to do this crazy thing, which was make a movie. And we're sitting at lunch, and and you know somebody asked, "So what are you guys going to do?" And and I said, "Well, we're we're going to make a homeschool movie. We didn't have a a title for the for it at this mm-hmm. point." We didn't even really know what it was going to look like, but we said, we're going to show homeschooling like it really is. We're going to show that it's a great option for families, and we're really excited about it. I think that's about all we knew, right? I think so. And the friend who we didn't know at the table said, oh, man, you've got to meet our friend Scott LaPierre. And we said, okay, great. Tell us about Scott. And and they, you know, told us about Scott. You're going to get to meet Scott in mm. an upcoming episode. We have already recorded his episode, and it's fantastic. But within a few weeks of that meeting, we were on a plane up to Woodland, Washington, to meet Scott and Katie, his wife, and to interview him and uh, several people from his church. We actually ended up doing a day in Portland where we did street interviews, and then all day at a church from... Well, yeah. just after lunch, because we did go to church in the morning. Mm-hmm. We had lunch with the congregation and then started recording interviews, and we got done at like— I think um, it was like 10 or 11 o'clock at it, night. It was a long day, but we had great stuff, and the movie was off to a great start. So um, God just kept um, confirming in such interesting ways and definitely made it clear that we were supposed to do that. So we set off on this journey, long story short— um, We sold everything we had. We sold our house. We sold our cars. We sold our furniture. We sold everything and bought a travel trailer and a truck and headed off across the country to make this movie. Not knowing where we were going. Right. We we literally, we we knew that we were just going to head to Georgia because we had family in Georgia. And so we said, well, we'll, we'll head there because it was December. We left on December 16th and we said, we just need to make it to Georgia by Christmas, because we had promised the girls that we would be with family on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. And so we drove away from California, really not knowing what God had in store. And up until that point, we had recorded interviews on three different sep- uh, sessions, three different occasions. We had done the interviews in Washington and Oregon, which were great. We had done a day of interviewing at uh, our Classical Conversations group, which was really fun. And then we had interviewed Andrew Pudua. Oh, that, w- that was a neat story, too. It you was. want me to tell that one? Sure, yeah. Okay, so that was really cool. We had kind of made our list of people that we wanted to kind of start the movie with. And Andrew Pudua was one at the very top of that list. And so we we were familiar, we were doing um, IEW curriculum with our daughter and stuff. And so I was very familiar with him. And I thought, you know, he would just be great. He's just got such a great personality. And 
he would be a great one to start with. And so Garrett sent him an email, I think, and just said, hey, we're making this movie. Again, I don't think at the time we even had a title yet for the movie. And we said, we're filming this documentary on homeschooling. We would love to have you be part of it. And, and our thought was, we're going to be traveling across the country from uh, you know West Coast to East Coast, and we can just kind of hit Oh, we knew he was in Oklahoma. We can hit Oklahoma on the way mm -hmm. if we need to and interview him. We would be willing to do that. And so you sent him an email, Garrett, and he responded within like a few hours. And mm -hmm. he said, yes, I'd love to be part of this documentary. You know, how do we work out the details of it? And and then anyway, long story short, it turned out that he was heading out to California. He was going to be just a couple of hours from where we where we lived and he said, I'll, I'll be happy to come to you because he was going out there to visit his family and it was going to be a personal trip. And I remember he said, if I go out there and we film this, then it can turn my personal trip into a business trip and I can write it off. And we were like, <laughs> well, you're welcome. <laughs> and he was so gracious. He actually drove, I think, about two hours to where we actually were. And he spent the day with us. We got to interview him. We got to take him out to dinner that night and just got to spend some great time getting to know him. And, and he said, you know, here's all the, a list of people that you, you know, you should get in this movie. And if you have any problems getting in touch with them, let me know, I'd be happy to help you. And he was just so gracious mm -hmm. and his name alone really, really kind of brought, uh, you know, made, credibility, brought, to right, the credibility. That's the word I'm thinking of mm -hmm. to the movie, because as soon as we said to so many people, oh, you know, we've interviewed Andrew Poudoi, they would say, oh, we love Andrew. He's wonderful. And well, if he's in it, it must be a real movie. And, um, and it was just so great. And so that got the whole thing rolling and God just opened up that great door. And we were able to connect with so many people because of that. And that was nothing but God's doing. Yeah. And and that was how he worked and has worked since. Um, we had also done master's college too. Oh, yes. Uh, we knew that we're, we were going to need the college perspective for the movie. And so um, one day we got to drive down to master's college and we had done some others at the house where we did Andrew Pudua, but we didn't have much of an idea still what we were doing. And we headed out across the country and how long have we filmed? I mean, we, we filmed for about a year and a half. Well, it's been almost two because I think our very, very first interviews that we did were in August, right? Uh, I want to yeah. say they were in August because it was the, when we were still in our house. Sure. The test was in August. Right. August, September. So, but, but our first interviews that we did, official interviews, were in December of 2016. So, right. um, so it's been a little more than a year and a half since we filmed those first interviews. Yeah, and it's been great. God has provided the just the best people. Um, we we go into every interview not really knowing what to expect, and Yvette has kind of some questions in line, just to get things started and make sure the interview moves in a certain direction. But it always goes somewhere better, I think, in oh, yeah. every case. And we'll be we'll be watching together as the interview's going on and thinking about how interviews will work together with others that we've done in the past. And it is just such a fun fun process. We finished interviewing in Nashville. Right. In Nashville, which was just a few months ago in March of 2018. And over the past year and a half or so, we've traveled um, a lot. We've been to, I think we've traveled to. I think uh, we've filmed in 20 we, states. Have we? Something like that. Yeah, it's yeah. been a lot. Um, or at least had that many states represented because some people have come from other states. And But we've traveled, we've, I think we have traveled to about 20 different states. And it's been so great just to get a perspective of homeschooling across the country. And part of it has been that people have just opened up their homes to us as we've traveled and said, mm -hmm. hey, you know, come stay with us. We have made friends. Uh, I mean, across the whole country, it has been, been the most blessing. amazing thing. You know, we were kind of part of our little bubble in California, which we love. We love our California bubble. <laughs> we love our friends and family there. And it was really hard to move out outside of that. But it has been such a blessing meeting people in all different parts of the country and getting to see all these different parts of the country and interviewing. So it's not like we just stayed in one place and got just, okay, here's the perspective of people homeschooling in California. I mean, we have people from New York, the Carolinas, Georgia, Florida, 
California, of course. Alabama. Um, Alabama, Tennessee, uh, Virginia, Ohio. I mean, a lot. And it's mm-hmm. been really exciting to see. And it's been neat to see the homeschool community just rally around us and mm-hmm. come together. And really, people people are people. And uh, there is just a real great community of people in the homeschool movement mm-hmm. who love each other and work together and, you know. And we found so many similarities, too. You would think that things would be different, and they are different from community to community. But really, the homeschool community is very similar, um, very, very open, very family-oriented, of course, because it's it's really a movement of families. Um, and we have been so blessed by getting to know them. I, I yeah. It's been a blessing. And the struggles are all the same for everybody. Right. You know, it seems like every mom we talk to has, you know, more or less the same fears about, you know, am I doing it right? Am I messing up my kids? Am I teaching them enough? Am, you know, am I making it fun? Am, am I doing this the right way? And um, so it's been neat to just be able to just come alongside those people and say, you're the same as everyone else. We all are in that same boat. And then you have those older moms like Dorinda Wilson and Heidi St. John and Connie Albers who have been through it, they've done it, they've graduated their kids and their kids are thriving as adults. And those are the moms and dads who are coming alongside saying, you're doing a great job. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. And what, a, what a great encouragement they are to the community. It, it really has been. Mm-hmm. It has been. One of the my favorite things we've done too, I, I don't mean to keep going on this, but I was thinking about as you say, Heidi and Connie and and these people, is, um, it's been a blessing to be at homeschool conventions where these people speak mm. because you see the homeschool community come together and there's nothing more encouraging than being in, in a room with 4,000 homeschool families and all knowing that everyone is going through basically the same mm-hmm. things and dealing with similar issues, but having these people on stage say, you're okay, this is what you need to do to move forward. And it's going to be all right. Your kids are going to be great. Uh, We have been blessed. We've been able to be at several conventions across the country. And to me, I always leave energized. I leave energized as a homeschool dad, as a husband, you know, encouraged to do my job. I leave energized as a filmmaker because I know that that stuff is just so impactful. And we're going to be able to incorporate that into the film. But so much more, I leave selfishly encouraged. Um, it really is a blessing. The other thing that's a blessing is ha- seeing how many families are together at these things. Homeschooling, um, it, it it's always encouraging to me to see the movement of families who are intentional about raising their kids up in the right way. Um, we believe that that right way is in the in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And you see so many families together walking hand in hand through these conventions who are all walking in the same direction. It really is, it, it's encouraging to me. It is. And, you know, as you're talking about conventions, one of the things that we have realized is that almost across the board, every curriculum company that's out there, I won't say every single one, but most of them were homeschool families mm-hmm. who saw a need and met that need, and mm-hmm. they created their curriculum. Classical Conversations, Apologia, um, Not Grass History. Um, just, I mean, there are so, so many of them that are, were just, you know, IEW, their families that, you know, mom or dad saw a need and just said, hey, you know, let's create this curriculum. Oftentimes it was for their own kids, mm-hmm. and then it just turned into something bigger. And so most of the curriculum you see out there nowadays is created by homeschool families and often still being run by those families themselves. Right. Which is really exciting because actually in the movie, we talk a lot about family business and entrepreneurship and th- things like that. And so that plays perfectly into homeschooling and how and why homeschooling is so powerful for families because it allows families to be together and work together and learn together and mm-hmm. teaches kids work ethic. And, you know, our girls work with us. That's been a really exciting part of filming this movie is that, we, you know, we went from Garrett being gone pretty much all the time when he was working in, in the Hollywood film industry. He was just, I mean, he'd be gone for days at a time. And um, it was really hard on our family. And now we're together 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> and and we love it. 
And, you know, sometimes we need to get out and breathe a a little bit, but we really enjoy being together and, and it has brought such a different element to our family and to our girls' lives that they get to be part of this amazing thing that God has called us to of making this documentary. Yeah. So back to the podcast, we, we have been talking about this for a year and we're, we try to keep them around 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So we're at 26 minutes right now. And I want to get back to what people can expect. But one of the reasons we did the podcast was because we had such a wealth of great stuff to share with people. When you make a movie like ours, you go out and you film a lot of stuff and it can't all make it into the movie. And we didn't want to just let it fall down and uh, go into a hole and disappear. We wanted to really build up homeschool families. So an outgrowth of that was the podcast because we had forged relationships with great people uh, who just had so much good wisdom to share. So we wanted to bring those to you. Um, Another aspect of that, though, is that we went out to our news newsletter subscribers early on and said, what do you want to hear th- in the podcast? What can we answer for you? And we've already started answering some of those questions. Uh, Yvette, do you want to sh- share some of those responses? Sure. That was so much fun. We, we didn't know how many responses we would get from that. And we got well over 80 responses. And they were such good suggestions for topics and guests to have on. I mean, the the interesting thing is so many people ask the same questions in different ways. A lot mm-hmm. of people are, you know, just wanting to know how do I balance my homeschool day or how do I balance my homeschool day with little ones? You know, I've got an infant and a two-year-old who are running around like crazy and I'm trying to homeschool my seven and nine-year-old or, you know, whatever your family dynamics look like. And so we have uh, Pam Barnhill is going to be on. She's going to talk a little bit about some of that stuff. And um, we've got some other guests actually that are coming on as well that will help address some of these questions. We have people who have asked about um, children with learning disabilities and how you homeschool those kids. And so we've got people who are going to come on and talk about that. Mm-hmm. We've got uh, one of the questions we were asked, which Scott LaPierre does such a beautiful job of answering is, what do, what do moms do when their husbands are not on board with homeschooling? Mm-hmm. And so I talked with Scott about that and he just, he addresses it so perfectly and biblically and um, just gives a great answer to that question. And, um, you know, how do I make homeschool fun? So Trish Corlew from Hip Homeschool Moms is going to come on and talk about how to make homeschool fun. She's a fun one. She is really fun <laughs> because it doesn't have to, it, you know, the thing that we've realized is that with homeschooling, so many moms think that when you homeschool, you have, you're bringing the schoolroom as we know it into your home. And it's really hard to replicate what school looks like at a traditional school. And that's not what homeschooling is. And so we get encouragement from moms again, you know, like Dorinda Wilson, who've been through it and who, who have walked that road and can give encouragement of just relax, (laughs) just relax and have fun with your kids. Um, Ginger Hubbard talks about parenting. We had some questions about Mm. parenting and how do you deal with discipline issues? Because obviously that's part of homeschool and that's part of raising our kids. So Ginger Hubbard addresses that beautifully. And she talks about uh, just training the hearts of your children. And so, so many of these questions are getting answered. And then we had a whole list of um, guest suggestions and we've already been able to connect with some of those people and they've agreed to come on the show. And some of them we've actually already recorded podcast Mm -hmm. interviews with. So that's been really exciting. I, I see a couple here that are really fun to me and they're the one word ones. We have one, somebody just said encouragement and I would really honestly say that is the heart of what we do is encourage homeschool families. We want to equip you by giving you great resources and great, you know, pouring wisdom into you and instructing you. But really, we want to build you up and encourage you so that you can make it through. So we will do that in spades. That is our highest goal. The other one is road schooling. And on our journey, we've gotten to try that out. And yes, we have. We have now almost <laughs> a year and a half, uh, well, actually more than a year and a half of ro- road schooling under our belt. So we'll get to that. Um, maybe we can have on another guest who's done it and uh, yeah. talk about the joys of traveling. It's it's uh, awesome that homeschooling allows you the freedom to get out and travel and you can still do school on the road. So. Yeah, it's fun. We get to say that our girls get to actually drive the map instead of just look at it on a piece of paper. And um, so that's been a big blessing. So we're almost to 30 minutes and I, I want to tie up this episode, but really quickly, I want 
to talk about the two other things that we have that we can offer to people, which is the website and then our backstage pass membership site, Mm because those are great resources as well. Um, The website, schoolhouserocked.com, we have some guest bloggers who are just wonderful and they they post such encouraging things and all kinds of different topics that you can find on there. So you can find guest blog posts on there and we actually will have a whole lot more guest uh, posts coming up in the near future. There's um, already a wealth on there though. There's stuff there on uh, special needs, homeschooling with special needs. There's stuff on family business. Mm-hmm. Um, there's just general encouragement for homeschooling. It's a wealth of information. Then the backstage pass membership, um, the Backstage Pass site is where you get an inside look at the making of the movie and you get the value of all this video that we've done. We're going to release basically everything over time. Um, in addition to the movie, you're going to see the uncut interviews with our guests and you'll find that at the Backstage Pass site. Um, there's a free subscription that gets you access to clips that you can search by topic and And they're going to answer your questions and build you up quick. But if you really want to dig down deep, we have a paid membership and it's the cost of a cup of coffee a month. Um, For $4.99 a month, you can get access to complete interviews. And there's already several hours up there. We have uh, Heidi St. John, Mm -hmm. Sarah McKenzie, um, Andrew Kern, Kern, Connie, uh, yeah, Connie Albers Mm -hmm. is up there, Um, uh, Josh Tolley. His is amazing. Yeah. That do, was Brooklyn's have, favorite. Yeah. Do we have Sam Sorbo up yet? Or she, a portion, a of, portion Sam of Sam Sorbo's up. Her she whole, was fun. Her whole interview isn't up yet, but there's a few minutes there, and it's great. And, and I want to uh, just elaborate a little bit on what that is. So as we've filmed interviews for the movie, each interview has been, I mean, I would say the average time that it's taken for an interview is probably close to an hour, and yeah. we have a ton of them. I mean, our cast list is is massive. If you go on the website, you can actually see who several of our cast members are and then families as well. And so obviously, you know, we can't put an hour of Heidi St. John in the movie because Although that, that would, would take be a, a good hour. It would be a good movie. <laughs> um, it would be fantastic. But we've got so much great content. And so, you know, we can't, we, we want to do something with the remainder of the footage that's not going to make it into the movie. That's just so powerful that we really want people to be encouraged by. And so, well, that's what's going to be on the Backstage Pass membership site is you'll get some behind the scenes stuff. And then you'll also get the full exclusive interviews from the cast members. And you get to see us record this podcast in living color. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. So, yeah, just uh, to, to go on that for just one more second. Our first big interview, like we said, was Andrew Pudua. And his interview was almost two hours long. And there's not one minute that's not excellent. I don't know how I'm going to cut that interview because <laughs> it, it was so good. We were sitting there just dying because it was two hours of great stuff. So that's coming to the Backstage Pass site um, and just so much more. If you want to be built up, if you want to be encouraged and equipped, check out members.schoolhouserock.com. And it's a great way to support the movie. All of the um, right. paid membership um that comes in actually goes to support production of Schoolhouse Rocked. And so that's a great way to support the movie and get something for yourself in return. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Why support the movie? Well, um, we, we actually, right now the plan is that the movie is going to be in theaters in early summer of 2019, but we have a huge budget that we still need to meet in order to get it in theaters by next year. Um, we're working with Fathom Events, which some of you may be familiar with them. They're, they're the um, company that does a lot of Kirk Cameron's documentaries and, and live events and stuff like that. And so as of now, the plan is that the movie will be in theaters across the country, probably 850 plus theaters. And we're really excited about that. But that is going to take an army of people to get it done. We have to hire, and we've already ha- have all these people in place, but we have to pay for a composer and a colorist and a second editor. And um, I, I mean, there's and, just and a marketing budget and, it, and a marketing it takes budget. Money to get right. The marketing the budget is huge, and so we need to raise the rest of our budget to get it in theaters, and it's a whole lot of money. And so everything that you know, whenever people pay for the backstage cross membership, that goes to help support. That. Right. Yeah. Every every membership goes straight to production on the movie. Um, and you can also donate to support if you believe in what we're doing. 
Um, come beside us and help make a movie. You will be doing a great thing um, and you will be building up the homeschool community just like you've been built up. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening today. We are very excited to be here with you. We hope that it's been an encouragement to you and we really hope that this podcast will encourage and equip you in many, many ways on this homeschool journey. For great homeschooling videos, articles, giveaways, and more, check out members.schoolhouserocked.com and use the coupon code PODCAST10 to save 10% on any paid Backstage Pass membership. Backstage Pass members get exclusive access to full interviews from the cast of Schoolhouse Rocked and so much more. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and leave a review. Until next time, I'm Yvette Hampton, wishing you the joys of community and the wisdom to teach and learn. I've already God recorded uh, Ginger's interview, which went so, so well. Uh, but it was, I think it was the second one I did, and I completely botched the <laughs> intro on it. So Podcasting is hard. It is hard. It's, it's a lot harder than... Um, than it seems like it should be. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. I, and I'll get better at it as we do it more. You, you're you already very good at it. But it is not just uh, point and click and shoot and go. It's it's hard. So, it yeah. is. So I'll be quiet while you record Ginger's intro. Um, but I will run the recorder, okay? Okay. Sounds great. You ready to go? I think so. Okay, here it goes. On this week's show, we're talking to Ginger Hubbard. Ginger is an encouragement to me and thousands of other homeschool moms as she speaks at conventions all across the country on the topic of biblical parenting. She is the author of several books, including Don't Make Me Count to Three and Wise Words for Moms. On today's show, we'll be giving away two copies of Ginger's newest book titled, I Can't Believe You Just Said That. So be sure to check out the show notes for details. That's what you call nailing it. How was that? Good job. Is it good? Yeah.